How much do you buy Ross saying he was naive when he decided to meet with Jim Harbaugh? I'm selling. I think Ross threw out a line and Harbaugh didn't bite. Look, Ross saw the same thing that we all saw. Harbaugh took a 4-8 team, the Ivy League of the West, and turned them into a 12-1 team that demolished Virginia Tech in the Orange Bowl. Afterwards, he was spurned when he went out to the West Coast, and he tried to save face by saying that he didn't realize it would be national news. Really, Ross? Yeah, I think it's, uh, that was a real train wreck, Rick. Uh, I think uh, Ross mishandled it. Uh, Ireland mishandled it. Uh, you feel sorry for Tony Sperano. And also, I didn't like Harbaugh. I don't think the head coach of a, of a team uh, or an assistant coach or whatever, as long as a team has a coach, uh, another coach doesn't go and talk and interview with them. So I think there was a lot of blame to go around. Uh, they tried to mend it with the press conference, but uh, it was a train wreck. That's another issue, by the way. I, we all know that he's a big-time fan. I know him as a big-time fan. Maybe a little naive in that instance. We will have to see. And by the way, you know, the world is littered with the Nick Sabans and Spurriers and those guys who didn't make it when they transferred. So that's the other issue we've got to deal with. But let's take Ross at his word that he and no one connected to the organization ever contacted Bill Cower or John Gruden. Is that a mistake as well, after all the teams coming off back-to-back -back losing seasons, guys? Well, Rick, I think the key, as you said, can no one connected with the organization made contact with Kyra. I think they did reach out uh, and engage his interest in whether he wanted to come to Miami. Uh, if that's not the case, if they didn't, then yeah, I think that's a big mistake because here Bill Cower is. He's a Super Bowl winning coach, uh, a, a great, he's got a proven track record. So. Uh, I think they did reach out and talk with him. It just wasn't anybody connected with the organization. Yeah, I agree. Big mistake if they didn't reach out. You just look at the two coaches' resumes. Cower, 15 seasons in the NFL, eight division titles, two trips to the Super Bowl, and one in which he won. And then you look at Gruden. He had 11 years in the NFL, and he won a Super Bowl with the Buccaneers. You at least have a duty to gauge their interest. All right, so the bottom line, what you're saying, Davis especially, is it's okay to contact them, and we should have, as long as it happened back channel. Well, and that's the way it works, Rick. I mean, I represent coaches, and I've been involved in deals like this where uh, they get in touch with you to see if your, your client, your coach, is interested in a position like that. But, but again, it's only if the team has fired a coach. Tony Sperano was the coach, and, I, and again, I think that it was inappropriate for the Dolphins to be out there trying to fill a position when they still had a coach in place. All right, guys, so how about this one? How difficult will it be for Sperano, Ross, and Ireland uh, to move forward together? Very difficult. Sperano has to regain the trust of the team. But really, it starts with general manager Jeff Ireland. He should look to build a much stronger offensive line. They'll regain the trust by having success on the field. The Dolphins were ranked 21st in the league in rushing yards. Henny was sacked 30 times, more than c combined the, pa the prior two years. That's where it starts. Success on the field, then gain the trust. I think uh, Sperano, again, I know he was upset. You could tell, I could tell by watching the press conference that he didn't like. And if I'm him, I didn't like the way this whole situation was handled. But you know what? He's still one of 32 guys that has the title as a head coach in the NFL. And so, you know, he's going to move forward. There are some things that they'll have to do in the locker room. But I think uh, uh, that, that they can move forward and, uh, and, and mend the relationship. He also shouldn't be wearing those purple pants at the practice facility there. You saw in the highlights. Hey, 10 seconds each, guys, quickly. Ricky Williams, Brandon Marshall, both critical of Sperano and quarterback Chad Henney, respectively. How well can Sperano manage the locker room after being undermined by the front office, guys? I think he can handle the locker room, and what I think he needs to do is have a meeting with the players. Right from the, the very first meeting he has is nobody talks bad about coaches. Nobody talks bad about other, their teammates. He sets that in place with a big fine if somebody does it. The most talented players run their locker room, make the talented players happy by giving them the ball. Well, I think, Ricky, I think Ricky Williams is gone anyway. I think Brandon Marshall is the person that they've got to deal with. And maybe Brandon Marshall speaks a little louder. Who knows what happens right. after uh, you know, beginning of the season, especially uh, during training camp.